Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I had it on and then I popped it off. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Better. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. This is a that that morning where we finished celebrating Christmas and Christmas time. And now we go into ordinary time. But there is nothing ordinary about God. Amen. God, the God that we serve, the God that we worship is extraordinary. The God that we serve desires for us to do mighty things. And mighty things we shall do in his name. This day is a day where we still see remnants of Christmas. Uh, we were just in uh, Disneyland yesterday, and this is the last weekend where they have all of their Christmas decorations up. And I must admit, it felt odd hearing the song. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. And I'm like, already? Um, <laughs> But you know, it's only a matter of time before we take the Christmas decorations off just to put them right back up. Because um, it does seem like they start earlier and earlier every year, right? Mm -hmm. But you know what? I'm okay with it. Because Christmas is a time where we celebrated the birth of Christ. We celebrated God coming down for us. To work, to allow us to worship Him. Last week we talked about the Epiphany, which actually was... January 6th, and so that's when the wise men, they came, that's when the church traditionally celebrates when the wise men came and gave gifts to Jesus. The gift giving shouldn't stop on, on January 6th, but the gift that we have to give is our worship. So let us worship God today with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. And so to begin worship, let us begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we look to you. We ask you to come in, to show us, to be with us, that we may hear your word. Guide us as we seek your face. Guide us as we seek to worship you. May this be a day where we have a renewed focus upon you. Lord, come in and show us. Come in and teach us. Come in and be with us. Lord, we seek you today. And may you be worshipped above all. For we pray all of this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 I would like to let you know there are a few announcements that we do have. Uh, one is that we have a Bible study on Wednesday. Every Wednesday we, we have a Bible study where we meet on Zoom. And that Bible study, we are currently going through the book of James. We probably have about two more weeks in James. Uh, and then we're going to go and we're going to come back and we're going to study Acts. And we're going to go, I know we work, we study Acts and on Sundays, but we're going to take a deeper dive into Acts uh, on Wednesdays. So we have a Bible study plan. Uh, picked a little Bible study there for us, uh, as well as I have some recommended other reading to supplement that. So um, I will bring a copy of that book. I meant to bring it today. I forgot. But uh, it's about how the apostles, the Acts is about how the apostles came and spread the word of God to the whole world. They took God's mission and they expanded it. God used them uniquely. And we are the beneficiaries of it here today. So, I invite you to join us. Uh, it is 6.30 on Zoom every Wednesday. And it is time where we we study the word, still in James for two more weeks, but then we're going to be moving into Acts. And then the other announcement I have is 
I know I, I made the, message, the announcement that two weeks I would be this upcoming Saturday, we were going to be moving, but that's, we kind of shifted those plans, uh, had some conflicts that had arisen. We are planning on having a moving thing, but it probably won't be until uh, that first week in February, but I will get back to you. I, we do need to firm up some dates, so. Um, and then we are here every Sunday at 10 a.m. Uh, and if you can't be with us live, I invite you to be with us on Zoom. Uh, right now we have, uh, looks like Camille and Michelle are with us on Zoom. So, hi Camille and Michelle. Uh, I want to give a little shout out to you guys. Um, but it will be on Zoom and then if for whatever reason you miss a Sunday and you miss the Zoom, uh, we will have a service up on YouTube uh, following. Uh, as some of you guys noticed, we have a full uh, Hollywood production studio up here. Uh, so uh, I hope that uh, maybe you missed something. Maybe you, uh, you showed up uh, you showed up late or you had to leave early for whatever reason. The service is going to be there for you. Uh, and then if there's something particularly poignant that you wanted to hate, Leland and, and Barbara, they did, they did this great rendition of this song. I think you should hear it. It's going to be available. So, uh, without any further ado, I would love to ask our worship team to come and lead us in singing God's praise. Good morning. Our first song is going to be In the House. And we can celebrate, we can say hallelujah when Jesus Christ is living in us because we've come to him. And we also can give him all of our burdens and lay them down at the door of our heart. This is the church where we worship, but in our heart is where Jesus lives. He comes to be with us here, but he needs to live in our hearts. So let's sing this song again. One 
nothing remains. And only one thing does remain, and that's love, which never fails us. Let's love. sing this together. Leland, did you want to add something? Yeah, God's love. This, this song is uh, talking about the love of God.
pamphlet of lyrics. You got to think you have to turn the page to get to this one. So everything's in sequence.
Thank you, worship team. We are back here in Acts. Uh, we took a little break from Acts as we celebrated Advent and Christmas and Epiphany. But now, we're back here in Acts. And so if you don't remember where we left off, uh, which it's been about six weeks. So if you're like me, something that happened six weeks ago might as well have been six years ago. Actually, I probably remember what happened six years ago better than what happened six weeks ago. But six weeks ago, we were here where Peter had had a dream. And he, God, showed him. Don't call things unholy or common. What God makes holy. And in this passage, it's where... God opens up the kingdom to not just Jews, but Gentiles also. And so where we're here, we're going to be in Acts chapter 11. And so now Peter, after listening to God, arguing with God, and remember it took God three times to tell Peter, to show Peter that don't call unclean what I have called clean. Don't call common what I have called holy. Remember, Peter, Peter needs that whole three, three times to be reminded of something. Remember, it's Peter that denied Jesus three times. It's Peter that had to be told three times by God, don't make things, don't think of things as common. Don't think of things as unholy. When I make them holy. And so here Peter comes back and he's telling the tale. It's right here at the beginning of chapter 11. He's telling the tale to the rest of the church. The rest of the church should be excited about it, right? But unfortunately, the church goes, I don't think you should have done that, Peter. I mean, the Gentiles, you went into a Gentile's home. That means you're unclean, Peter. And just like Peter had to be told three times, I mean, the rest of us probably need to be told many, many, many more times than three for God's message to get through. And so here, we as a church need to remember when God leads us somewhere, our brains are going to go in a thousand different directions, but we should remember that God's way is always the right way. God's ways are higher than our ways, and sometimes we just need to get out of God's way. So, let us... Before we turn to the scriptures, let us turn to God and ask him to open this up for us. Heavenly Father, we look to you right now. We look to your holy face to show us, to open up these scriptures for us. The things that we think we have figured out, Lord, remind us that we don't. That we constantly need to be seeking you out. To open up these words so that we may understand them the way that you desire for us to understand them. Lord, help us to understand that these aren't dead words, but this is the living word of God. And Lord, you seek to live in our lives through these, these words. So may our eyes be opened. May the scales fall from our, our eyes that we may see this with the eyes that you desire for us to see it with. May your grace and may your mercy pop out and jump out at us on these pages. And in these words, for God, you are a good God. You are a holy God. You are a God that desires to shine through in the midst of the darkness. As 
the song said, you are the way maker. Let us see your way through these words. We pray all this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I invite you to turn with me to chapter 11, Acts chapter 11, starting in verse 1. Now the apostles and the brothers who were throughout Judea heard the, that the Gentiles also had received the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcision parties criticized him, saying, You went to uncircumcised men and ate with them. But Peter began and explained to them in order. I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision, something like a great sheet descending, being let down from heaven by its four corners, and it came down to me. Looking at it closely, I observed animals and beasts of prey, and reptiles and birds of the air, and I heard a voice saying to me, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But I said, By no means, Lord, for nothing common or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But the voice answered a second time from heaven. What well, God has made clean, do not call common. This happened three times, and all was drawn up again into heaven. And behold, at that very moment, three men arrived at the house in which we were sent, in which we were, sent to me from Caesarea. And the Spirit told me to go with them, making no distinction. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered into the man's house. And he told us how he had seen the angel stand in his house and say, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will declare to you a message by which you will be saved, you and all your household. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell on them, just as, just as on us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave the same gift to them as he gave to us, when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could stand in God's way? When they heard these things, they fell silent, and they glorified God, saying, then to the Gentiles, also God has granted repentance that leads to life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The word of the Lord had reached the Gentiles. The word that meant repentance. The word that meant salvation. This is good news. This is the best news. Amen? Amen. God's salvation had come to the Gentiles, of which many of us fall into that category. God's word sent through Peter to this man, a man who, as it says here in Acts, the circumcision party would have thought would be unclean, undeserving of God's message. But God had bigger plans. God always has bigger plans than we can grasp. We often get caught up in tradition. We've always done it this way. Well, this way did this in this time. Well, these people always mean good, and these people always mean bad. Labels are something that we put on people. Labels are something that our world likes to slap on things so that we can understand it easier and better. But with God, when we are truly baptized in the Holy Spirit, those labels wash right off of us. Because God sees nothing but, my but his child. 
God sees nothing but someone who is seeking his face. We look in our world and we see division everywhere. And the hard part about division is that everybody says it's the other guy's fault. It's always somebody else is trying to sow division. Even Peter himself, he said, God had to come to me three times to show me this. He had to tell me, rise, Peter, kill, and eat. God was trying to say, I'm not dividing this between clean and unclean anymore. But Peter wanted to keep that division there. But God said, no. Stop doing that, Peter. And Peter went and finally relented and said, Okay, God. When God showed himself, when the Holy Spirit descended upon people who Peter would probably have said, There's no way. Because that's where his mind was. <clears throat> but God reminds us and shows us and says, Your ways. Your mind thought, mindset, the way that you think, is too small. You need to start thinking bigger. You need to start thinking bolder. Who is out there that needs to hear the word of God? We as a church need to start looking around us and saying, who needs the word of God? We go out and we see, oh, I've heard from more than one person saying, you know, I don't like the direction this world is heading. Look at those people over there doing this. Look at those people over there doing that. Our country and this world is just deteriorating and breaking down. Friends, you looking at the world that way, is God trying to speak to you saying, you know what this world needs? It doesn't need us saying that you need Jesus. It needs us to go out and bring Jesus to the world. Amen. That means we as a church need to be people that are spreading that love of God to even people who don't deserve it. Because guess what? We don't deserve it. God has shown us that we are wholly unworthy of his grace. And yet, he came to earth, sent his son to die for our sins. Not just our sins. But the sins of the world. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, God came and brought his message of salvation, his message of redemption, his message of repentance to the whole world. This is going to be unpopular. There are going to be people that say, no, 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 you're not doing things the right way. Peter encountered that right here. Peter encountered a world that wasn't ready. That was trapped in tradition. Oh, that's not the way we did things. That's not the way that this church was set up. But Peter, Peter had to cast all of that aside and say, this world needs more of God's love. And God's calling out to me to share it. Where in your life is God calling you 
to share his love with somebody. Maybe it's someone who you have had a huge disagreement with. Maybe it's someone who you've sworn off. Listen to the Holy Spirit, because God might be telling you to go to that person and share the message of repentance. Share the message that God loves them. There are no prerequisites to God's love. You don't have to come into this church first. God loved you before you even stepped in. You don't have to call yourself Christian before God loves you. God's love you read John 3.16, there's no way around it. For God so loved the world. It's not for God so loved Christians. It's not for God so loved Horizon Community Church. It's not for God so loved anybody who believes this tiny set of beliefs. So loved the world that he sent his son to die for us on a cross. So if God can love the world, while it is hard because we are not God. Amen? Yeah. I hope that we can all say amen to that. God is calling us to go out and try. Go out and be people that are seeking to love the world. Not that we may mimic the world, but that we may love on the world and bring God's love to the world. God is calling out and he says, you know, even with the naysayers, even with the people that say, hmm, not those people there. God calls out to us to say, God's mission God's mission for the world is so much bigger than what we had originally thought. God's love for the world is so much bigger than our minds can even comprehend. Because our minds do want to put things in boxes. I'm going to steal your mic here. Turn it on. But God loves us. And God loves us this world. And the world may want to shut us up. Because the powers of this world thrive on breaking us up into little boxes. Because a divided world is easy to conquer. God, God is striving after us. He says, I don't care. I don't care what country you were born in. I don't care whether you are a man or a woman, whether you are a Jew or a Greek. I don't care whether you are a, 
a Muslim or a Christian, I love you. And this church needs to strive after sharing God's love. That doesn't mean that we cast people aside because they have a certain set of beliefs. But no, we strive out and reach out and ask them to have communion with them. The Holy Spirit can reach you no matter what, no matter who you are. The Holy Spirit can reach you, and we are called to be God's people. This isn't saying that there are many paths to, to reach God. Don't get that, those words twisted. But it is saying that God loves everyone no matter what. Even if you are a devout atheist, God loves you. And he desires to have a relationship with you. But the church needs to be willing to go to those people that the church has traditionally shunned. We don't engage them in fisticuffs or war the way that the world so traditionally has sought to solve its problems. No, Jesus taught us that the way to reach the world is through sacrificial love. The theological word for this was God's preemptive love. His love that was for us before we ever even knew who God was. God loved us. And desired for us to come and reach out and say, Come, God, come into my heart. Come, into, come here. And God is calling out to us to be the church in a place to bring people who may have rejected God more than three times. God desires for us to be the church, to reach people who may not have been reached before. Because Peter remembers Pentecost in this moment. When he was with the Gentiles, he remembered Pentecost. And maybe we can remember that moment where we were so far from God that we had rejected him. And we see where God came in and saved us. So we need to look at the world from the perspective of saying, we were there once. We had rejected God. Whether it be through our words or through our actions, there are times in our life where we have rejected God. But God's love didn't stop coming after us. God's love didn't stop seeking after us. But no, even when we were so far off, God reached out and said, I love you, my child. I want to have a relationship with you. And I will do anything it takes to restore that relationship. Even sending my son to death on a cross. God wants us as the church to be a church that mimics that. Because... When we actually hear and see what the Holy Spirit is doing in our world, we will be just like the detract Peter's detractors here. Silent. Because in the face of God, in the face of God's mission in this world, sometimes the best thing we can do is remain silent. And 
allow God to do his work in the world. There are many that might say, but, 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 but. Let's hold on to that. Let's hold on to that and ask God to show us something new, to show us something unique, to show us something unexpected. As we said here, this word is alive. We may have, like, well, but I learned it this way back in 1995. Um, they taught it like this. You know what? The word is alive and it's active and it's moving. And so even though we may have learned something about this passage, something about Peter, something about that, God calls us to engage with his word afresh every single time. But I learned in seminary, no. Take what you learned in seminary and it's fine, apply it. But don't allow yourself to be so confined in saying that this is absolutely what the Word says. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Because the Holy Spirit can speak new life into these words. And the Holy Spirit is and strives for us to understand that this Word is alive. And if we have any words that say anything against that, let us just be silent and get out of God's way. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we look to you and we ask that may you continue to work and be active in the words in this scripture. And Lord, may we understand that your love is so massive and so expansive and so preemptive that you loved us before we knew what love was. And Lord, help us to be the church that is willing and ready to move with you. Ready to move for you. And ready to let you lead us as we need to be led. We pray all of this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Oh, to you and we ask you to come and be with us. Take the gifts that we give to you, both the monetary gifts and the gifts of our time and the gifts of our voice. Lord, take them and use them that your grace and your mercy, your love and your truth, may they shine. Lord, we look to you. We give to you. We honor you with all of our time, with all of our money, with all of our voice. Lord, we give this to you that you may use it to expand your kingdom. For we pray all of this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. And now is a time in our service where we, we give back to God through our prayers. Uh, if there is something that is a, something that we need to be praying to God for or asking God for, uh, let us offer that up. But if there's something that we have a praise to lift up to God, let us do so at this time. Leland. There's an unspoken request from my daughter for prayer. Bethany. So, so we lift up Bethany's uh, unspoken request and we, we offer that up to God because God knows what's going on. So we lift this up to God. This is our prayer to the Lord. Lord, 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 Lord. Lord. Also for Kavio. 
potential for continued health, getting stronger, recovering from the heart attack. And she's been having, she's had a headache. Uh, it's been kind of bad the last couple of days. Uh, so pray for, prayer for that. So prayers for Camille, uh, for her continued healing. Uh, and pray specifically that she's had a headache the last couple of days that we, we want to be offering, uh, lifting that up to God to, to bring healing to. So this is our prayer to the Lord. Uh, we want to be lifting up uh, Mojin and Azita as their, their current house situation. We want to continue to be lifting that up. So this is our prayer to the Lord. And uh, do you have an update on uh, Fatima? Fatima, uh, they sent her to emergency for heart. Uh, I feel like that the cancer goes all the way from the jaw like, to the heart. But she did not ask us. She asked us to stay out of the doctor's office. Does not want us to know what is going on. But right now she is in the Tulsi night heart section or problem she has to say maybe two or three days see what's going on. So uh, we, we've been praying for for Mojin and Zita's friend Fatima. Uh, she had cancer in in her face, jaw, neck, ear, uh, and now she's in at Cedar Sinai with uh, in the cardiac uh, wing there so let's just be lifting her up and asking God to move in her so this is our prayer to the Lord but we have a, a bit of a praise uh, my we found out uh, this week that uh, the insurance had said that they were going to stop uh, paying uh, on my mom's treatment uh, and so, they, so this was going to be the last week that they were going to be paying uh, and so uh, my sister being diligent had uh, been filing all the appeals that she needed to file and uh, found out late yesterday that the, uh, they approved the appeal so they're not cutting off uh, payment to that so we just we lift up you know, even in a world of bureaucracy, God still can move. So, um, this is our praise to the Lord. Tom. Just uh, prayers for Camille. 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 It's a, it's a great prayer, Tom. You know, uh, there are lots of decisions that, that get made, and we are uh, thankful that uh, we just ask that we serve a God that is mighty and, and knows far more than we do. Uh, we ask for, for those who are making those decisions. We, we pray, we lift them up in prayer. Uh, we pray for all the teachers and all the students that uh, many are going back tomorrow. Um, we, we lift them up and we pray for their safety. Uh, and we just, we just ask that God's hand of protection just be upon everybody who is in this, uh, in this situation right now. So, good prayer, Tom. This is our prayer to the Lord. Chuck. Just continue prayers for Brianna and uh, you take it home for Christmas and New Year's uh, in the hospital. Uh, cancer is continuing uh, to grow. The tumor around her spine. She can't move her legs anymore, so her leg. And uh, so the family, about every 15 minutes, uh, have to go in and move it deeper.
If there's a, another way, uh, another something that you can encourage, if you were able to join us uh, at Bible study, Chuck was able to share share one of those pictures with us, uh, and you know what I you know what I saw on everybody's face, joy, uh, not just happiness, but joy. Uh, and so we we do continue to lift up Brianna. We 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 don't we won't stop praying for for Brianna and her family. You know, we, we don't, even in the face of hard news, we, we still have faith that God is, uh, God is in control of all of this. So we lift up Brianna and, and her family in prayer. This is our prayer to the Lord. Our Lord, hear our prayer. Angie. Absolutely. Well, that is, that's, you know what? Every every time we've been praying for Makai, it's always been this is the last. This is this is this is a, they did, this surgery was successful, but there's going to be another. I didn't hear a but there, so so that's even that's even better news. So, but we, we lift up praise to God for from a successful surgery for Makai and that he is free of a tube. So, this is our praise to the Lord. But we also do continue to lift up uh, uh, Chris and Kathy's family um, as they are, they mourn, uh, as they are figuring out uh, a little bit of life uh, after after their dad passed away. But we just we just continue to we as a church just just continue to lift them up in prayer. This is our prayer to the Lord. Lord. Uh, and then just an additional little prayer there is that uh, is that as far as I know it's just Devin that's that tested positive. Is there anybody else that in that household? So yeah, so uh, Kathy's not here, uh, but because there was a COVID, uh, Devin, if you guys know Devin. Uh, tested positive and so Kathy uh, out of an abundance of caution still feel, said she still felt fine it wasn't having symptoms but out of abundance of caution decided to stay home today uh, uh, and it, I think that she's one of many that are dealing with those types of decisions whether to you know uh, know to being in around people that have tested positive for COVID and knowing what what to do in those situations and just we just pray for everybody that is dealing with that same thing and we pray specifically for Kathy right now so this is our prayer to the Lord Nancy So we, we pray for Daniel and, and his wife and dealing with with COVID. Uh, it's it is uh, it, it's rough uh, going through right now. We see some surges. So we uh, we pray for we pray for Daniel and we pray for his wife. We pray for healing for them. So this is our prayer to the Lord. Lord. Go for it, Dale. Sundance will contact me and let me know so I'll know sometime uh, during the week about 
of that. And then please, she said, continue to pray for her daughter, Georgette. She'll be seeing this new doctor in this next week. And also she talked about a friend of hers named Barbara that used to go here years ago. And now this lady's close to in her 80s and she's got COVID as well and was in the hospital. So pray for Barbara too as she recovers. And then I talked to Fred yesterday, my neighbor, about her son David. He is continuing to heal, but he's been adjusting to the fact he no longer has a tall bladder. And he didn't realize the extent of what the digestive problems would be. And he's learning real quick what agrees and what doesn't agree with him. And he does like to eat, as I know. So please keep praying for David and continue healing for him. And then I would continue to ask for prayer for Vicki and Ben as well, as far as I know. The uh, endoscopy has not been done yet. It seems like it's dragged on for so long, and now with what's going on in the hospital and so on, I don't know if he'll have a chance to have it done soon or not. And then, last but not least, my son-in-law, Michael, he's on a new medication for his back pain. And then on Friday, he had a stress test um, pray for him, please, and the result of that stress test, he's been seeing a cardiologist as well. And then my daughter, Robin, had a diagnostic test coming this Wednesday, which is a follow-up of a mammogram that she had a week ago. So I would like prayer for both Michael and Robin. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. So we lift up Corky, and we keep our, keeping our prayers up that she's able to have uh, the surgery on Tuesday after meeting with the oncologist tomorrow. So this is our prayer to the Lord. Uh, we continue to pray for Georgette uh, as she uh, meets with the specialist. We just pray for, for answers and um, for positive uh, movement forward and just healing. So this is our prayer to the Lord. Uh, we pray for Barbara uh, dealing with the issues that she has with COVID. So uh, this is our prayer to the Lord. Uh, prayers for David uh, as he continues to figure out what he, uh, what he can and cannot eat uh, as he continues to heal from gallbladder surgery. Uh, yes, your life changes dramatically when you take out an organ, right? So, this is our uh, prayer to the Lord. Uh, we continue to pray for Vicki and Ben. We continue to lift them up and, and just that God just provides them with the comfort that they need. Uh, that if there's a possibility to get this endoscopy done, like that God opens up that path. Uh, just in just general, just prayers for, for them that they can just find comfort in the Lord this time. So this is our prayer to the Lord. And then we pray for Michael and Robin, and we pray for stress tests, and just, you know, that God just puts his hand over them and just brings, brings them uh, healing, brings, brings comfort, and all of everything that only God can bring. Uh, this is our prayer to the Lord. Leave it. it just came to mind, mind uh, <clears throat> my uh, my nephew, by marriage uh, Seth, had some really grave surgery earlier this year, and we could just pray for him to have God's hand on his life and encouragement for him and his wife. So prayers for Seth who had surgery and just just prayers for God's uh, providence, God's grace, God's mercy, God's love to just just completely uh, fill their lives. So uh, this is our prayer to the Lord. And just prayers for for 
our world, prayers for our church, and prayers for how we can minister and fulfill God's mission to the world uh, in, in this church. So this is our prayer to the Lord. And, and let us join together. Uh, let us say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I now invite you to stand. This is the day. This is the day. before we knew what love was. We go out into the world being the people that bring God's peace to a world that is full of chaos and division. We bring unity. We bring God's wholeness. And when we go, wherever we go, we go in peace. Go in peace, church. Mm -hmm. 